talking about today is Baby Savage. We're talking to him. Uh, Baby Savage is also known as the God of Grind, and the reason for that is because he likes to rap about uh, success and entrepreneurship and, you know, how to, how to, you know, do business. So he's all about making money, and, and he really does sport that, you know, he backs that with, with his, he, he, his buildings, the amount of people he knows. Um, he had a special guest, and we're going to talk about that in the interview, uh, Deering Humor and Harmony. So you guys, uh, you're definitely going to want to hear about who visited him and, and happens to be his mentor. All right, so let's go ahead and get you over to that interview. Uh, enjoy. It was definitely an interesting interview for me. Um, and I had a fun, I had a fun conversation with him. I'm Brittany Hazleton, and this is Architex Artistry, where we explore the arts in our area. Today's guest is a Shreveport musician who has built relationships with a few celebrities in the music world, both during and before humor and harmony. Go ahead and introduce yourself. My real name's Alonzo Sanders, but professionally known as Baby Savage, the God of Grind. Okay. So first, I would like to ask you to tell me about yourself and your music. So I, I'm I'm kind of like a different artist. Uh, when it comes to my music, I talk more about business and um, success. Uh, and building generational wealth, as well as just entrepreneurship. I I try to create uh, music that's like not too boring or that's going to run people off, mm -hmm. but still is going to educate them at the same time. Because you know a lot of people um, don't read books after high school, basically or college if you go that far. Is um, so especially when you're talking about. Uh, the demographics of people who that I actually reach, uh, reading the book after high school is actually unheard of. So um, the type of things that I rap about can be educational financially to where it can actually spread a message to actually, you know, uplift communities. Uh, when we're speaking about investing, stocks, real estate, crypto, uh, or just business in general. Well, that's awesome. I, I like that you're helping with the education. I feel like that's an issue a lot. You know, we don't have the greatest education system here in uh, Shreveport or in Louisiana right. in general. And, and, you know, you have the chance, you know, to, and the reach to help people grow, you know, past right. that, you know, where our education right. has barriers, I feel like. Right. Well, that's cool. Um, so where did music begin for you? So, uh, it started when I, when I was young, maybe around about uh, 16 years old. I never really took it serious, though, until I was around about 26 years old. And it was really um, more so uh, of me trying to find something to do with myself. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't want to get, like, your regular nine-to-five job. I've always considered myself an entrepreneur, so I just happened to take the music business serious. So it, it wasn't really more focused on the artistic aspect. It was more focused on a business and a way to create income for myself mm -hmm. um, rather than resorting to you know anything else that I felt like, I'm not gonna say beneath me, but the type of person I've always been all my life is that I just wanted to do something on my own and I never really wanted to work for anybody. No, I understand that. You know, and that's the, you know, that's the truth uh, uh, for any artist. I, I'm a painter myself. Uh, and right. so, like, be, like, they don't tell you this when you become, when you're an artist. Like, you start, especially if you're someone like me who focused uh, on creativeness before anything else, and then you get to the reality of, hey, you know, you got to actually market it yourself. You got to be able to be a business person and make the connections, you know, as well. Right. So I think that's a good start. That was probably a good start for you that you focused on the business element uh, right. before the creative element. And 
I don't blame you for it one bit. Um, so we already discussed the topics and your music, and uh, but I'm curious. You referred to yourself as as the god of grind. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, when you think of God, you think of a supreme being. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to work ethic, when it comes to hustle, I've always considered myself a supreme being in that in that realm. So I feel like none other come before me. Of course, you have people who are more successful than me and things like that. But when we're talking about on the ground level um, of people who haven't really just made it to that A-lister yet, if, you, if you're on my level, there's no way that you're going to beat me. All right. So you really, you know, it, you really are like focusing on the entre entrepreneurial spirit, you know, yeah. for yourself, you know. Um, that's awesome. Um, so everybody knows about the gold building by I-20, and that's your building. Right. Uh, can Correct. you tell me a little bit about your building there? It's a, it's a seven-story building, seven but it's story. only four floors. So when oh. it comes to the height, the height is actually seven stories because I have each floor that's like 12 feet tall. Yeah. So each floor is had like actually has high ceilings, but um, the, the building is actually for several businesses that I'm creating. And uh, one of the businesses is actually a dealership. Another business is the music business. So okay. each each uh, floor is going to be kind of like for something different, but it's all going to be situated under my umbrella. It's not a it's not a building where I'm renting out rooms or renting out offices or anything like that. This is all just under my company, and it's a private company. So if you work there, it, it's not like a public company like Walmart where anybody could just walk in and go in and you know buy things. This company right here is just for the employees, or if you're doing business with the company. But uh, I'm actually building 200 locations. So I'm on my eighth property right now. Um, we got one location in Baton Rouge. We got one location in Shreveport. Uh, we got a, another location in Atlanta. We're working on a location in New Mexico. So I got eight properties so far, but I'm building 200 locations all together. And it's basically gonna be four location in each 50 states of the United States which would be basically be total up to 200 locations. Oh, wow. And um, each location is basically going to be the same thing, a dealership, uh, part of the music business. And when I say part of the music business, so the outside is going to be like an outdoor event center to okay. where we could throw, uh, you know, concerts on the outside of each location, um, as well as have small meet and greets on the inside, where we could do educational workshops and educational seminars to educate people about the music business. And not only that, my, my Shreveport location is, is going to be a little different because I'm actually going to allocate like once a month uh, to teach stocks, to teach crypto and more. It's, it's a conference room in there, and I'm setting it up kind of looking like the stock market. Not actually that big, but just saying <laughs> with, yeah. with the TVs and everything on the wall and, and the season, we're going to yeah. have a stay here. And as soon as the stock market opens, we're going to go live with the stock market. And I'm going to teach uh, people from lower income communities about stocks right there on spot and just start helping them invest with like as little as $5, $10, different things like that, just to get the ball rolling with them. Oh, that's awesome. Like, so it is basically, it's for, it, it is your business hub. And and that's cool that you got the concept of the, you know, having a stock market kind of place where people could do trading and learn from you here. Because obviously, right. to have that many locations already, you're pretty successful at what you do. Right. Yeah. And oh, no, I, definitely. Definitely. You know, um, I've I've always been successful with everything I, I've always done. Like, some sometimes people, you know, when, you, when you're dealing with the world, they want you to be humble. And... In my mind, the truth is the truth. When when it came to setting up businesses, when it came to anything, I always wanted, like ever since I was a child, 14, 12, 13, and I saved up and I said, hey, I want this type of game when I was little. It was never anything that I felt. I've never felt it's something that I said I wanted, and I've never turned back around. So in my mind, if I say I'm going to do it, there is no turning back around, so I got it done. So, um... 
it got to the point to where I felt like I wasn't making my dreams big mm-hmm. enough. So I felt like I was cheating myself by continuously being able to achieve everything that I said I wanted. So now I say I want to do 200 buildings and I want to be able to gross $70 million a year annually net profit from this company. And I feel like that's something that's going to take me a while to complete. So I feel like it's a challenge. You know, previously yeah. I've done a lot of things. I've I've made uh, millions of dollars in the music business. Um, I've grossed millions of dollars with several different businesses. And all of those things just felt like it was too easy. So, you know, I look for a challenge. Um, and I think that these 200 buildings um, are going to be the challenge that I need that I feel like it's going to take me a while to accomplish, which uh-huh. I have the goal set for 15 years. So by the year 2038, everything should be done and, and I should be approaching retirement somewhere around here. Oh, that's awesome. It's good to set yeah. goals. And, and it really goes with like your music style and everything being, you know, and calling yourself the God of grind, you know, and, right. and you know, if, and my thing is you've got to be able, if you're going to sing about that kind of stuff, you got to be able to represent that like an actual paper. Right. You right, know, right. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> that's awesome. So, so, uh, during 50 Cent's Humor and Harmony, I heard that you had a special visitor. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so Master P came by uh, by my building. And, uh, you know, we all know who Master P is. One of the most successful, prominent uh, hip-hop CEOs out of Louisiana. And not only out of Louisiana, I mean, just in the industry, period. Yeah. Master P, when you're speaking of success in the music business, will be considered top five, you know, uh, up there with Jay-Z and Birdman and Slim and the likes of the people in the hip-hop music industry who made an enormous impact as a CEO. So Master P came by the building and uh, he gave me a great interview and he gave me some great information and knowledge uh, while he was there. We talked for a good little while. He took pictures with everybody who I had over there, you know, and, and it was just a beautiful experience because he's been one of my mentors over the past 15 years, ever since I started doing music. And, oh. and that wasn't my first time meeting him. I've met him several occasions uh, on tour, as well as, uh, you know, backstage. Uh, we did interviews before, but to have him come out and visit my building and show support for me, you know, that meant a lot to me. That's awesome. Oh, that it must be great. And, and I feel like the opportunities are only going to get better meeting people and, and growing yeah. here, you know, especially with everyone that 50 cents bringing in. I think it's great. It's great for our city. I, I feel like Shreveport, we have this reputation that, you know, we, that we're just, you know, not, we're just so underappreciated here, despite right. the amount of culture and art that we have. You know, I'm I'm a Shreveport. I, I'm from Shreveport myself. I grew up, you know, I grew up in Ingleside was my neighborhood. And, you know, I always hated how people treated our city. It's like, yeah, you just don't understand our struggles and what we go through. But from that struggle and stuff, art, like our creative spirits here, we have so much like amazing what? talent. And like people right. that have that are you know clawing their way to surviving to even just surviving here, but like like for someone like you to to you know reach for that success, I'm happy that right. we have someone like you here. Just, right, you know it it really motivates me um because I have younger children on several several numerous occasions who see me and say hey. Ain't you the man on the building? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, and they're young kids, so they don't really know me by Baby Savage. And, yeah. I, and when I say, yeah, you know, I've had several of, uh, kids who tell me, hey, I'm going to build a building bigger than yours one day. Uh, I'm going to build a building too one day. So that, that type of motivation was truly like, because even me, I had people who I looked up to, to you know, uh, at a younger age who motivated me to actually want to go out and be successful. And I know how important it is for people to see someone from their city who they can see all the time to do something like that, too. It really gives the human mind the mentality that, yeah, I can do it, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
especially yeah especially when you see someone that grew up in the same area able to achieve right. things it's like yeah i can do that and i think that's something we need here and i think you know right. 50 cent sees that in us you know, and all of those right. people that they're getting to see the light, uh, you know, the what we are capable of here. Right. Um, I did an interview years ago for uh, this is 50.com, which is 50 cents YouTube channel and website yeah. and things like that. I actually brought them down here to Shreveport. This was about 15 years ago. Oh. Where I brought this 50 down, uh, down here or whatnot. And, um, you know, I think it's a great thing to see what 50 cents doing in the city he's actually giving hope to a lot of people mm -hmm. um you know as well as he's brought uh a lot of business to the city of streetport oh yeah and you know i can see the future plans where he's going to be bringing a lot more money uh to the city of streetport which is going to increase the economy and you know ultimately you know increase the population um uh, and build up you know certain parts of the city to where uh, things, you know, buildings are going to get re renovated or constructed from the ground up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's going to be great just bringing the entertainment industry to Shreveport um, in a whole. I feel like Shreveport is built for it. We're, we're great at partying. So yeah. <laughs> we need the, the, the yeah. you know, the entertainment, the festivals, everything here is just, we're ready for it. It just, it's right. a matter of like having somebody like him actually be like, yeah, I'm right. ready to take on this, you know, and in the right. film industry, I'm really looking forward to that for like that covers right. so many aspects like music, arts, you know, production, actors, you know, all right. of that, you know, that's a big deal. And, you know, I think Shreveport's going to we're we're go, we're already we might already be the second biggest city because Baton Rouge split from St. George, so we might actually be the second biggest city in Louisiana right. now. I don't know if you knew that, but right. uh, you no, know. I didn't know that. And I'm yeah. actually originally from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I moved to Shreveport uh, when I was what 19 years old. Mm. So I've been here over 22 years, and um, you know, with, the, with with what with what the entertainment and how it's coming to Shreveport right now, I had this vision for Shreveport when I first start building my building downtown. And the reason why is because when I look at all the major hip hop artists who who came from Louisiana, none of them live in Louisiana anymore. They all live yeah. in Atlanta, California, uh, LA, places like that. So I always said to myself, I have to build something here, even though I left as well, I'm back and forth to Shreveport, but I still want to build something here that yeah. people can see and that if people want to get involved in, they can get involved in. So my building is basically uh, a music label in the likes of like a Universal or Warner Brothers, um, a major label that's that anybody can go to, though. So it's not just for particular artist is for every artist. Anyone can come in, anyone can get involved. And we started it off with um an artist called Young Bleed. So Young Bleed, he was a national artist. He went gold with platinum. He was actually with Master P uh in 1997 and we're releasing four of his new songs under my label. And right now we're actually uh being distributed by Rock Nation, which is Jay Z's label. So um we That's just awesome. did a partnership deal, yeah, with for distribution with Rock Nation and um we're moving forward. So my label is going to be signing artists and it's going to be distributed by Rock Nation. And that's one of the major things for Shreveport um when it comes for independent musicians who actually want to get to that next level. All right. That's awesome. So so if somebody want, is an artist or is a musician and they want to get contact with you, how do they get connected? All they got to do is Google me. Now they can call me or go on Instagram or Facebook. I'm easy to contact. I, I've always believed in answering the phone myself. I don't deal with mm -hmm. managers. I don't deal with assistants. Because through my years of that experience, when I was trying to reach out to other artists, their managers always... Some of them drop the ball and they don't do the job like I feel like they should. 
they don't take you seriously person. enough, right? Yeah. And then they just disregard yeah. you, and it's like, well, there goes a, a lost opportunity for both parties. Yeah, and then you never know who that person would, would be or, or what that person can do for you, what type of money mm. they could bring to the table, what type of, uh, you know, anything they could bring to the table. So after seeing that for myself, you know, I've been decided not to never let anyone manage my career. I'm going to manage my own career because I pick up the phone every time and I don't just answer the phone. I pick up the phone and make calls as well. So, you know, I cold call a thousand people if that's what it takes to get, oh. you know, the job done. I appreciate that. I appreciate that because yeah. I know so many people are trying hard and they may have the most talent in the world. They could be a prodigy, but some people will just ignore them, you know, right. and, and, you know, you're giving people a chance to, you know, you, for you to at least get a look at them and say, okay, yeah, you, right. this is a talent that should be, you know, out there. And that's awesome. Right. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, is there anything else um, that you would like to say to our viewers? Yeah, uh, you know, we we talking about the gold building. Uh, I bought three blocks over there in that area, so we got some more things coming. Uh, and the gold building is actually GOG headquarters. G -O -G but the gold building just some somehow took a name for itself, I guess. <laughs> but uh, and, and I can see why. But it's actually GOG headquarters. Out of the two hundred locations building in Shreveport, the headquarters, the 200 locations that I'm building in the United States, the headquarters is right here in Shreveport. Nice. So the office is going to be in Shreveport, which is going to be huge. Um, and, and even if we're talking about financially, the money that the company is bringing in by being, you know, future speaking, of course, by being in Shreveport, the city is going to benefit from that tremendously uh, through tax dollars as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to working with Andy and everybody. And you know, if you read the billboard on the building, it says 200 buildings by 2038, 70 million annually. That's the goal from the guy to grind, and we're not stopping till we reach it. And I'm gonna put one more thing out out there before I go. I got these cards right here. This is my son Aww. on these cards, and what they are is they are able. ABC generational wealth for us. So instead of teaching A is for apple, B is for blue, C is for cat, it teaches A is for assets, B is for bank, C is for cash. It has pictures. It has descriptions. It teaches about stock and a whole bunch of other different things and for kids as young as four and five. And my son, he's already five and he's already trading on the stock market. Oh, so that's it just awesome. goes to show you they can learn anything at a young age. So yeah, start them out young so they become masters at it by the time they're old enough to, you know, buy their own houses and stuff. Right. <laughs> right. That's definitely. awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking to me. And if you have any uh events or anything that you are, you know, having, just give me a sure. shout out and we'll do more interviews about it. Well, well, you know, I wish I could have got you down here to the Master P event. Uh, but I tell you what, you know, I, I, I'm working on getting Jay-Z down here, too, to come Ooh. to my building. So so as I work on getting Jay-Z down here, I'm going to make sure that you're one of the persons that I call so oh, you can come out and cover it. That would be great. I would love no, to meet Jay-Z. <laughs> yeah, it's done. It's All right. Done. Thank you yeah. so much. Um, I look forward to talking to you more in the future. You, thank, too. Thank you so much, Baby Savage, and you take care. All right, you, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, so that was Baby Savage, um, the god of grind. Um, and, yeah, he, Master P, uh, uh, was there. And it's amazing to see some of the people that he has had out to his place. Um, like, hold on, let me show you here real quick. Yeah, here's him with Youngbleed and Master P. And Youngbleed, yeah, he, he's uh, been top of the... Billboard 200 uh, a couple of times um, with some of his albums um, in the uh, late 90s and early 2000s. 
and Master P, well, we know that Master P, he's a very well-known um, music producer, uh, executive, and musician. Um, and it's amazing to see these kind of figures coming to Shreveport um, and, and, you know, getting in, getting in touch with people, local people here. Um, so I think that maybe a lot of good opportunities will come from this and hopefully he does get Jay-Z out here because I know I would love to meet Jay-Z uh, <laughs> and uh, I definitely would I'd jump on that chance and you'd see a special architect's artistry for sure uh, during that um, and you know he worked with 50 Cent before and that's really awesome and I you know I can appreciate you know these major figures coming in and I look forward to seeing where everything goes. Um, so thank you for watching. And next week you can catch me at Saturday at noon again uh, for another Architects Artistry. Um, we'll do, I, as I said, I do uh, Zoom interviews every week. And I uh, do occasional mini documentaries for uh, local artists within the Arclatex. Um, you know, if you know somebody, uh, or you are an artist that would like to talk to me, you have an, or you're an art organization that has an event coming up, you just give me an email. Um, it's B-R-I-T-T-N-E-Y period H-A-Z-E-L-T-O-N at KSLA.com and you email me your details. And maybe we can set up um, an interview so that we can talk uh, about your event or your art. So thank you so much again for joining me. Check us out on YouTube, Roku, Apple, um, Apple TV. Check our website. Um, I'm under community and Architects artistry or under podcast. You can find all my videos. Um, so thank you again. Take care.